Hi, I'm Brianna. And I'm Akira. And you're watching Dante's, Dante's Boxing Nation. <laughs> Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So Floyd Mayweather, he did an interview today with uh, ESPN on, I guess, Facebook Live. And he talked about, or at least I should say, he was asked the question. Actually, Floyd Mayweather, he said to the reporter, he said, what do you want to see? Like, basically asking the reporter, who do you want to see me fight? And the reporter, he said, well, I would like to see you fight the elite fighters like Keith Thurman, Errol Spence. So Floyd Mayweather, he responded to that, and he basically said, look, Errol Spence, Keith Thurman, he mentioned Terrence Crawford, Adrian Broner, he talked about Canelo Alvarez being a, a, a big money draw versus Manny Pacquiao, but he basically said in response to facing an Errol Spence or a Keith Thurman, Floyd Mayweather basically said he's an old man now, and he's trying to work smarter not harder. Now, and I talked about this last week on a radio show, and I'll go ahead and say it again. I totally agree with Floyd Mayweather when he says that. First of all, we have to think about this. How many fighters do you know at age 40, or even close to age 40, even at age 38, how many fighters do you know right now was getting in the ring with young, hungry, undefeated, stronger, and bigger lions like Canelo Alvarez. How many fighters close to 40 years old was beating a number two pound-for-pound -pound champion and um, an eight-time division champion who I believe ESPN had, or some people had this guy rated as fighter of the decade, how many fighters do you see beating that level of opposition close to age 40? You don't see it too often. You don't see it too often. I mean, even when you look at fighters like the great Muhammad Ali's, the Sugar Ray Leonard's, so on and so forth, those fighters were done in their early 30s, okay? So the fact that Floyd Mayweather was dominant for 20 years, he finished on top, you have some of the greatest boxing trainers from different countries like Nacho Berestein saying that Floyd Mayweather is simply the best. He's the Michael Jordan of the sport. You have trainers like Robert Garcia, Robert Garcia's father who trained him and Mikey Garcia. You got the whole Garcia family that have praised Floyd Mayweather more than any fighter today within the last 20 years. And many other American trainers and boxers that have, that have praised Floyd Mayweather. So the point that I'm making is, when you have all of these people praising Floyd Mayweather as being the best fighter of this era, and even networks like ESPN, ESPN is one of the most biased sport networks there is today in America. Matter of fact, don't just take my word for it, go to Wikipedia and type in ESPN and see what Wikipedia says about ESPN. They even talk about the historical ramifications of ESPN being biased. And the reason why I bring this up is because even ESPN, as much as they personally hate Floyd Mayweather's guts, even they have him rated as the greatest fighter in the last 25 years. That basically means he is the best fighter of this era, of this generation. He's the Sugar Ray Leonard, the Muhammad Ali of this era. That's how ESPN has Floyd Mayweather ranked. The reason why I bring all that up is to say, if Floyd Mayweather is already universally considered the undisputed best fighter of this era, no matter who Floyd Mayweather were to fight from this point on, regardless if he fights or if he doesn't fight, it doesn't matter because no one is going to be able to compete with Floyd Mayweather's resume in the last 25 years when it comes to names that Floyd Mayweather has beat and how dominant he's been 
in the last 20 years. You know, I want people to understand when it comes to Floyd Mayweather or any other fighter, I may not agree with every single thing that they say outside of the ring if they're talking about politics or whatever the case may be. But when it comes to giving them the credit that they deserve inside of the ring, I'm never going to allow personal distractions to cloud my vision when it comes to speaking the truth about how good a fighter is. I've used Sergey Kovalev as an example many times before. Sergey Kovalev is a racist, okay? Whenever you call black people monkeys and you come from a country that throws bananas on a soccer field and comfortably, openly calls black people monkeys, clearly, Sergey Kovalev, he knew what the implications were when he called a black man a monkey, okay? So, but with all of that being said, I still give Kovalev the credit that he deserves in the ring. I don't care if the man is racist or not. I'm not going to tell you he's overrated just because of what he thinks about black people or what he thinks about anything outside of the sport. I'm still going to give him the credit he deserves because one thing has nothing to do with the other. Okay. Edwin Valero, another example that I always use Edwin Valero was a fantastic boxer. He was something special, okay? He had a tremendous knockout spree. He had knocked out almost all of his opponents in the first round. Edwin Valero was no joke. Now, do I condone the fact that he was a murderer, that he was a drug addict, that murdered his wife in cold blood and then killed himself while he was high? Am I condoning that? Not at all. But if we're just talking straight boxing, I'm going to give Edwin Valero the credit he deserves in that ring because one thing has nothing to do with the other. So I just, you know, I, I pointed all of that out because once again, I want people to know that the problem we have in the sport of boxing is so many fans are emotionally attached and they cannot separate their personal feelings from just talking the sport. Just speaking with logic. Separate emotions from logic. The average fan cannot do it. And those fans are called decafs. So that's all I got to say on this one, guys. I'm on to the next one. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.